Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Saturday, February 25th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $15 Bank Shop best bet, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Saturday in College Hoops. First up, we go to the Big 12. We got one of the bigger games on the board. It's Texas and Baylor. This one's going to be a 2 o'clock Eastern start time on ESPN. You got two top 10 teams going at it in this one. Texas is number 8. They're 22-6 and six overall, 11-4 in the Big 12. You got Baylor 20-8 and eight overall. They are 9-6 and six in conference play. You know, Baylor's off back-to-back -back losses, but both of those games against tough top 20 teams in Kansas and Kansas State, and both of those games on the road. Baylor's only lost two home games all season. Those were uh, January 4th and January 7th against two tough teams in TCU and Kansas State. And the TCU loss was won by one point. The Kansas State loss was in overtime by two points. So two losses, a combined three points. They lost those games by uh, Baylor, one of the best teams at play when they're playing on their home court. While Texas on the other side, they have struggled at times when they're playing in these true road games. In fact, they've lost three of their last four true road games against some tough teams like Kansas and Tennessee, but also that bad loss against Texas Tech uh, by seven points. So, you know, it is tough to back Texas, in my opinion, when they're playing this road game, because I think both of these teams are great teams. They're obviously top 10. Uh, the two teams that are ranked high in Ken Palm as well. Great numbers for both of these teams on really both ends of the court. But I think with Baylor having that home court advantage, you also look at the shot quality data. I think it benefits Baylor a little bit more. And I think Baylor is the better rebounding team, something I didn't expect seeing this year because Texas usually has a nice front court. And you know, going into the season, it looked like they were going to have another good front court this year. But Baylor, number 14 in the country in offensive rebounding percentage, going up against a Texas team that's ranked 212th in defensive rebounding. That could be the difference maker in this one. So I'm going to take Baylor on their home court. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, we go to the ACC as Virginia Tech takes on Duke. This one's going to be 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. You know, I'm still worried about this Virginia Tech defense. It wasn't great against Pittsburgh in the win over the Panthers back on February 18th. And then, you know, we faded them against Miami. And Miami, they scored 76 points. Uh, you know, and the defense struggled yet again for the Hokies. Now you go on the road where you have not played very good basketball this season. I just can't trust Virginia Tech in this matchup. We've seen them lose a lot of road games in the ACC this year to some teams you'd expect Virginia Tech to beat, teams like Boston College. You know, Syracuse is having a little bit of a down year, so that's a tough loss to lose by double digits. You lost to Wake Forest as well. Uh, and you just, in Georgia Tech, you know, the most recent upset loss back on February 15th by seven points. So the defense is just not in good enough form for me to back them here. And you look at Virginia Tech, they've been struggling on the defensive glass a little bit lately. In that game against Miami, the Hurricanes had 14 offensive rebounds rebounds in the win and Duke is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country let alone the conference or number five in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage so I think Duke you know although this is not a great shooting team their offense is still pretty efficient because of that really good front court they get those second chance opportunities they do a little bit better of a job taking care of the basketball I think they'll be fine in this game so I'm gonna take the Blue Devils are on a three-game win streak I think they make it four I'm gonna lay the points Next up, we go to the Big East as UConn takes on St. John's. This one's going to be 12 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, I think that St. John's benefits in a matchup like this because their defense is really aggressive, so they're not really worried about giving up a lot of points per game. They play at a really fast pace offensively, fourth in the country in average possession length, so they're naturally going to give up a good amount of points per game, but their defense is still efficient because they force a lot of turnovers, and they can really benefit when playing teams like UConn, who, you know, UConn's got a great front court with Sonogo leading the way, but their backcourts had issues taking care of the basketball. Turnover-wise, this team is ranked 217th in the country, so a team like St. John's can force those turnovers, get a lot of fast break opportunities. And we saw in the first meeting, they scored 85 points in that game in the double digit win on the road. So I do think that this matchup still benefits St. John's, but it is a revenge game. UConn's still a very good team and a very good offense. So I, rather than taking St. John's to sweep the season series, which is going to be a tough one, I'm just going to take the over. I think both teams are going to be able to score some points. I think St. John's more so, like I said, on the fast break, forcing those turnovers, getting those easy buckets on the other end. But do I trust St. John's in a half court defense? Not really. I think you UConn's going to be able to bully their way to many easy buckets down low with their front court members. Uh, guys like Sonogo and Klingon should have big games yet again. So I'm going to take the over. I think we see a sloppy game, but a high scoring game, fast pace as well. Give me the over. Next up, we go to the SEC as South Carolina takes on Tennessee. This one's going to be 6 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network. 
there's no doubting that Tennessee is struggling right now. I mean, they've lost four of their last five games and two straight as well. But a lot of those losses were on the road against some solid teams. Now you're playing the worst team in the SEC by far, and you're playing them at home where you've taken down some teams like Alabama and Texas and Auburn. And it's not like the Alabama lo- uh, win was a long time ago. It was back on February 15th in the middle of this uh, losing slump. So I do think Tennessee at home here is going to put together a good performance. You look at South Carolina. Yes, they were able to make it interesting against Alabama in their last game. But first of all, that game was at home. Second, you know that was a game where South Carolina shot 9 of 21 from 3, 43%. This team is nowhere near that good overall this season. About 10% better, uh, 10% worse on the year from 3 than they had in that performance. And you know this offense has not been very good. The defense has been worse. And you're playing against the number one defense in the country when it comes to adjusted defensive efficiency and three-point defense. So you can't expect those perimeter numbers in this game. I think South Carolina really struggles to score in this one. And, you know, we saw the first meeting between these two. It was an 85-42 to 42 win for the Vols in that game. Just a dominating performance from start to finish. I think we see a similar game. I don't know if it's going to get that ugly, but I think Tennessee wins and cover the number, covers the number in the end. So give me the Tennessee Vols. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, we go to the USC and Utah game in the Pac-12. It'll be 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. I haven't been a big fan of this Utah team this season. I've faded them quite a bit on the bank shot breakdown, especially when they're playing on the road. But when they're playing at home, this team has been a lot better, and I do think that they're good enough here. I think USC is one of the more overrated teams in the Pac-12 and really one of the more overrated teams in all of the Power Five or major conferences. So, you know, USC, when you look at the shot quality data, very similar numbers to Utah. And, you know, Utah, like I said, playing a lot more competitive at home. We saw in their last game against UCLA, a game where it was a close game, a single-digit game. And that was despite UCLA shooting 53% from three, while Utah only shot 28.6%, 6 of 21 from the perimeter. You would think, based on those shooting numbers alone, that Utah was going to be in trouble. But, you know, it was still a pretty close game, pretty competitive game. Uh, I do think that Utah is the better defense in this matchup, and I do think it's a little bit overrated, but still, 36th in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency, much better when they're playing on their home court. I think they have the best player in the game in this one, and Brandon Carlson, I think he could put up 20-plus points in this game pretty easily, and I think Utah has enough here to grab the win and the cover, so give me the Utah Utes. I'm going to lay the points. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.